the crystal stakes it is one who is as the wise man and who knows the interpretation of a thing a man of wisdom makes a fist of shine and the boldness of his face shall be changed first Peter first gift of for the 120 above all you must realize that no prophecy in the scriptures ever came from the prophet's own understanding earlier so there's no perfect interpretation of the scriptures is the over almighty that gave dreams is the over almighty that gave the interpretation our brother joseph yahusuf is the that gave him the dream and is the yahuwah yah yahushua that gave joseph yahusuf our brother the interpretation because there's, there's no perfect interpretation of the scriptures Hallelujah. In the strength of the Uwa Almighty, I've given you the breakdown of Revelation chapter 9, which took ball. The locust like fallen angels, evil spirits, with of a vengeance that will touch us unbelievers for far more, which that won't happen. When you always take vengeance on the world, on the wicked, on the unbelievers. Hallelujah. And now I'm going to give you the breakdown of Revelation chapter 12. 10 and 11 in the understanding of Yahushua our Messiah our Almighty is Yahushua our Messiah our Almighty that gave John Yahugana this revelation and is Yahuwah Yahushua that give I will give you the interpretation of Revelation chapter 10 and 11 hallelujah because there's no perfect interpretation of the scriptures so is what I give the scriptures. This is a what words, and is Yahweh I want to give me the interpretation for me to give it to you. Hallelujah. So I'm gonna read from the NIV, from the ESV, and the new, the new revised standard vision. So there's three. I have three translations. The NIV, the NIV, the ESV, and the New Revised Standard Vision. Hallelujah. And I'm going to do this in audio so you upload faster. Hallelujah. We got believe, come on, hearing. Hallelujah. So that will be Revelation. So we are in a time that we should receive the breakdown of this of revelation. Hallelujah. And in the strength of Yahushua, I'm giving you the breakdown of Revelation chapter 11, Revelation chapter 9. And now this is 10 and 11. I'm going to start from the NIV. And some words I'm gonna use. I'm gonna use the Hebrew words for for the for injure. I'm gonna use Malak or messenger. Hallelujah. And as you will lead me, I'm gonna pronounce the words. I'm gonna discern and pronounce the word how it's supposed to be pronounced. Hallelujah. Revelation chapter ten. Then I, Yehogan, saw another mighty Malak, our messenger, coming down from heaven, the Shamahim. He was robed in a cloud with a rainbow above his head. His face was like the sun, and his legs were like fiery pillows. He was holding a little scroll, which lay open in his hand. He planted his right foot on the sea and his left foot on the land and he gave a loud shout like the roar of a lion when he shouted the voices of the seven thunder spoke and when the seven thunders spoke I Yahugana 
was about to write, but I heard a voice from Shamahim from the heavens, the Shamahim say, seal up what the seven thunders have said and do not write it down. Hallelujah. So Yahugana, uh, as I've said to the John, Yahugana, he saw a messenger come down from heaven and was robed in a cloud with a rainbow above his head. His face was like the sun and was shining and his legs were like a fiery pillows. He was holding a little scroll and he planted his right foot on the sea and his left foot was on the land and he shouted like a roar of a lion. Then the seven thunders, which are messengers, they sounded, but then Yahugana was about to write what the seven thunders said, which the seven thunders, they are angels, they are messengers, but then Yahushua said that Yahugana should not write it down what the seven thunders has said, so that's a secret. Hallelujah. Another verse five. Then the messenger, I Yahuwah has seen, standing on the sea and on the land, and raised his right hand toward the Shamahim, and he saw by him who lives forever and ever, who created the heavens, the Shamahim, and all that is in them, the earth and all that is in it in the sea and all that is in it, and said, there will be no more delay. But in the days when the seven messenger is about to sound his trumpet, the mystery of Allah Almighty will be accomplished just as Yah announced to his servants the prophet. Hallelujah. So let's break this down. Yehuguna says, the mysteries of Yahuwah Almighty will be made known just as Yah, our Almighty, told his servant the prophets. So they go for the precept to the book of Amos. Amos chapter 3. Image chapter 37 Surely Yahuwah, Alua Almighty, will do nothing but Yah reveals his secrets unto his servants, the prophets. Hallelujah. Yahuwah Almighty reveal his secrets to, the, to his prophets, the servants, his servants, the prophets, which today will be the one year for the 4,000. Hallelujah. Responsibility of the prophets is to is to reveal Yahweh's secrets to his people. Hallelujah. Revelation chapter 10, verse 5. Then the messenger I Yahweh has seen standing on the sea and on the, the land raised his right hand to the Shamahim and he saw by Yahushua who lived forever and ever, who created the heavens and all that is in them, the earth and all that is in it, and the sea and all that is in it, and say, there will be no more delay, but in the days when the seventh messenger, which is Magal, but in the days when the seventh messenger is about to sound his trumpet, the mystery of Yahuwah will be accomplished just as Yah announced to his servant the prophet. Now they found the precept that Magal is the seven messenger that will blow his trumpet. They go to the book of Daniel. Daniel chapter 
chapter that put the mark of all is a seven messenger that blown his trumpet then all chapter 12 Then the old chapter 12 that proved that Mark of all is a seventh messenger that blow the trumpet. At that time shall arise Mark of all, who is like Yahuwah Ma'alua. This is what his name says. At that time shall Mark of all arise the great prince who had charge of your people. Hallelujah. So Mark of all. The Ark Malak is over the children of Yasuri or and Gajuri or is over the children of Edom. So there's prayer and humble, humble and prayer, humility and prayer. Prayer is over the children of Esau. This war on Esau money. Esau say I trust in God, but my all is over the children of Yasuri or. So during the resurrection, during judgment day. Mark all is the seventh messenger that will blow the trumpet. Hallelujah. At that, day, at that time shall arise Mark all, the great prince who has charge of your people. And there shall be a time of trouble such as never has been since there was a nation till that time. But at that time your people shall be delivered. Everyone whose name shall be found written in the book, which is the book of life. And many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall be awakened, some to everlasting life, ha, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. And those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the sky above, and those who turn men into righteousness like the stars forever and ever. But you, Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book until the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall increase. Hallelujah. Now let's go back to Revelation. Revelation 10 verse 5. Then the messenger I, Yehogan, has seen, standing on the sea, on the the land, raised his right hand to the Shamahim, and he saw by him Yahushua, who Haya, who lived forever and ever, who created the heavens, the Shamahim, and that is, and all that is in them, the earth and all that is in it, the sea and all that is in it, and said, there will be no more delay. But in those days, when the seventh messenger, which is Michael, according to Daniel chapter 12. But in those days, when the seventh messenger is about to sound his trumpet, the mystery of Yahuwah Alua will be accomplished, just as Yah announced to his servants, the prophets. Hallelujah. Another precept is second Ezra fifteen verse fifteen. Second Ezra fifteen verse five. Behold, says Yahuwah, I bring evil upon the world, the soul and family, and death and discretion, for iniquity has spread to the all every land, and the half of these have reached their limit. Therefore, says Yahuwah, I will be silent no longer concerning their unrighteous deeds which the impious they commit. Neither will I iterate their wicked practices. Behold, innocent and righteous blood cry out to me, and the souls of the righteous cry out continually. I will surely avenge them, says Yahuwah, and will receive to myself all the innocent blood. For among them, be 
hold my people is lay like a flock to the slaughter. I ye uwa will not allow them to live any longer in Egypt, in the land of Egypt. But I ye uwa will bring them out with a mighty hand and with an uplifted arm and will smite Egypt with plagues as before and will destroy all its lands. Revelation chapter 11, 18. The nations were angry, and a wrath has come. The time has come for judging dead and for rewarding your servants, the prophets, and your people who revere your name, both great and small, and for destroying those who destroy the earth. Hallelujah. Revelation chapter 10 verses, the refuge again. Then the messenger, I, Yahuwah, has seen standing on the sea and on the land, raised his right hand to the heaven. So if you want to swear, swear by Yahuwah Almighty. Because this messenger, and you swore by Yahushua, Yahuwah our Almighty. So if you want to swear, swear by the Most High Yahuwah, because this is what the messenger did. Yahuwah, Revelation chapter 10, verse 5, then the messenger I Yahuwah, Yahuwah has seen standing on the sea and on the land raised his right hand to the heaven, to the Shemahim, and swore by him who lived forever and ever, who created the heavens, the Shemahim, and all that is in them, the earth and all that is in it, and the sea and all that is in it, and said, there will be no more delay. But in those days when the seventh, the seventh messenger, which is Makoor, Ekono Daniel, chapter 12, Paul, in those days when the seven messenger is about to sound his trumpet, the mystery of Yahuwah Alua Almighty will be accomplished just as Yah announced to his servants the prophets. So the mystery of Yahuwah is Yahuwah came, Yahuwah is rock. Our Almighty, our Most High is rock. But Yahushua came as a man to save men. So that is the mystery of Yahuwah. Yahuwah is a rock, but Yahuwah came as a man to save men. And Yahushua is coming again to reward his servants, the prophet, and his people, and to punish the wicked, those that destroy the earth. Hallelujah. And I'll go to it. Then the voice that I, Yehogana, had heard from the Shemahim spoke to me once more. Go take the scroll that lies open in the hand of the messenger or the Malak who is standing on the sea and on the land. So I, John, Yehogana, went to the messenger and asked him to give me the little scroll. He said to me, Take it and eat it. It will turn your stomach sour, but in your mouth it will be as sweet as honey. And I took the scroll, the little scroll from the messenger hand and ate it. It tis it tasted as sweet as honey in my mouth. But when I had eaten it, my stomach turned sour. Then I was told, you must prophesy against. Then I was told, you must prophesy again about many peoples, nations, languages, and kings. Now look, look, look for the precept. The precept for Revelation chapter 10. It to 11 is 
Jeremiah, that's Jeremiah 15, verse 16. But every Revelation chapter 10, 8 to, 8 to 11 again. Then the voice that I, Yehogana, I heard from the heavens, the Shemahim, spoke to me once more. Go take the scroll that lies open in the hand of the messenger who is standing on the sea and on the land. So I, Yehogana, went to the messenger and asked him to give me the little scroll. He said to me, Take it and eat it. It will turn your stomach sour, but in but in your mouth it will be sweet as honey. I took the little scroll from the messenger hand and ate it. It tasted as sweet as honey in my mouth, but when I had eaten it, my stomach turned sour. Then I was told, "You must prophesy against. You must prophesy again." about many peoples, nations, languages, and kings. So, John Yehugana was told by Yahushua our Messiah to take the little scroll from the hand of the messenger and eat it, which means to meditate on it. Because when you eat something, you meditate on it. When you read the scriptures, you are meditate, meditating on it. So, that go to the book of Jeremiah, Jeremiah. 15 verse 16 when your words came I Jeremiah Jeremiah ate them they were my joy and my heart and my heart delight for I bear your name Yahua Alua Almighty Hallelujah so Jeremiah Jeremiah who says when you found the words of Yahweh Almighty in Ede, which means to meditate on it. Alright. When you read the Bible, you read the scriptures, you are meditating on it. It's like how when you eat food, you eat physical food, your body extract the nutrients and store it. So when you read the scriptures, you read your words, you are meditating on it. Just as Yahushua told Yehogana. To take the little scroll from the mess in your hand and eat it. Jeremiah, Jeremiah 15 16. When your words came, I, Jeremiah, who ate them, they were my joy and my heart delight. For I bear your name, Yahua, Alua Almighty. Hallelujah. Another precept is from the book of Yahushua. That we should meditate on your words day and night. Yahushua chapter 1 7. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to be all. The Lord, my servant Musa, give you, do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. And you will be prosperous and successful. Have I not commanded you be strong and courageous? Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged for Yahua. Your Alua Almighty will be with you wherever you go. Hallelujah. So it's our job, our responsibility to eat the scriptures, to meditate on it. When you eat something, you are meditating on it. It's like when the goat. Or the sheep, when it's eating grass, it, it chew on the left side and it switch to the left to the right side. Hallelujah. So, when Yahushua Messiah told John Yahushua to eat the scroll that was in the hand of the messenger, that is that he should meditate on it and he should prophesy to many peoples, 
many nations and many tongues. Hallelujah. Revelation chapter 10, 8 to 11. Then the voice that I, Yahugana, had heard from the heavens, the Shamahim, spoke to me once more. Go, take the scroll that lies open in the hand of the messenger who is standing on the sea, on the land. So I, Yahugana, went to the messenger and asked him to give me the little scroll. And he said to me, Take it and eat it, which means to meditate on it. It will turn your stomach sour, but in your mouth it will be as sweet as honey. So when you fast, when you are when you are fasting, it doesn't make your spirit to be stronger. Alright. People fast to make that, that spirit stronger. Because when you not, when you not eat physical food, your spirit becomes stronger. When you eat physical food, your physical body becomes stronger. So, Yahugana, how a John, Yahugana took the scroll from the, from the hand of the messenger and he ate it, meaning he meditated on it. Hallelujah. So, that's the understanding. So, I, Yahugana, went to the messenger and asked him to give me the little scroll. He said to me, Take it and eat it. It will turn your stomach sour, but in your mouth it will be as sweet as honey. I took the little scroll from the messenger hand and ate it. It is that sweet as honey in my mouth, but when I had eaten it, my stomach turned sour. Then I, Yahugana, was told, You must prophesy again about many peoples, nations, languages, and kings. Hallelujah. So that's the breakdown of Revelation chapter 10. Yahugana saw this messenger come down from the heavens to Shamahim, and he had a rainbow over his head, his feet were made out of fire. The, the messenger he said one foot. He said his right foot. He said his right foot in the sea and his left foot on the land. And he was holding a little scroll. And he shouted like, like a loud lion. And when the, when, the, when the messenger shouted, seven, the seven thunders, they sounded, which are messengers. And when the thunder sounded, Yahugana was about to write, but then Yahushua says, he should not write it down. That would be a secret. All right. That would be a secret. So he should not write it down. And the messenger says that the mystery of Yahuwah will be revealed when Michael all the seven messengers sound his trumpet at Daniel chapter 12. That Yahuwah mystery, mysteries will be revealed just as Yah told his servants and the prophets. Hallelujah. And Yahushua also told Yahuwah to take the little scroll from the, from the hand of the messenger and eat it to meditate on it. Then he should go. After he eat it, it will be sweet in his mouth, but it will be sour in his stomach. Then he should go after meditating on the scroll that was in the hand of the messenger. He should go and prophesy to many peoples, nations, language, and kings. Hallelujah. So that's the breakdown of Revelation chapter 10. This is the breakdown of Revelation chapter 11. I'm going to read it and preserve it. The whole point of reading is to get understanding, is to get interpretation. And remember, the two witnesses are the children of Israel. Yes, we are. 
the northern tribe and the southern tribe, the house of Judah and Ephraim. One day is a thousand years to your most high. Hallelujah. Revelation chapter 11. And I was given a reed like a measuring rod and was told, Go and measure the temple of Yahweh Almighty and the altar with its worshippers, but exclude the altar courts. Do not measure it because it has been given to the Gentiles. They will trample on the holy city for 42 months. And I will appoint my two witnesses, and they will prophesy for 1,260 days, clothed in sackcloth. They are the two olive trees and the two lampstands, and they stand before Yahuwah, Almighty of the earth. If any man try to harm them, fire comes from their mouths and devour their enemies. This is how anyone who wants to harm them must die. They have power to shut up the heavens so that it will not rain during the time they are prophesying. They will have power to turn the waters into blood and to scrack the earth with every kind of plague. As often as they won. Now, when they have finished their testimony, the beast that come up from the abyss will attack them and overpower and kill them. Their bodies will die. Lie. Their bodies will lie in the public square of the great city, of the great city, which is figuratively figuratively called Sodom and Egypt where also their master Yahushua was crucified for three and a half days some from every people tribe language and nation would gaze on their bodies and refuse them burial the inhabitants of the earth would glut over them and will celebrate by sending each other gift because the two prophets had tormented them, had tormented those who live on the earth. But after three and a half days, the breath of life from Yahuwah entered them and they stood on their feet and terror struck those who saw them. Then they heard a loud voice from heaven saying to them, Come up here. And they went up to heaven in a cloud while the enemies looked on. Verse 13. At a very hour, there was a severe, severe earthquake, and a tenth of the city collapsed. 7,000 people were killed in the earthquake and the survivors were terrified and gave esteem glory to Yahuwah, Almighty of the heavens. Hallelujah. Verse 14. The second war has passed. The third war is coming. The seven messenger sounded his trumpet. And there were loud voices in heaven which said, The kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of Yahuwah, our Almighty, and his Messiah, and Yah will reign forever and ever. Verse 16. And the 24 elders who were seated on their thrones before Yahuwah fell on their faces and worshipped Yahuwah, saying, Give thanks to you, Yahuwah Almighty. We give thanks to you, Yahuwah, Aluwa Almighty, 
the one who is and who was because you have taken your great power and have begun to reign the nations were angry and your wrath has come the time has come for judging the dead and for rewarding your servants the prophets and your people who revere your name both great and small and for destroying those who destroy the earth then your Uwa temple in heaven was open and within his temple was seen the ark of his covenant and there came flashes of lightning rumblings peers of thunder and of an in an earthquake and a severe hailstorm. Hallelujah. So the whole point of reading is to get understanding, is to get an interpretation. So now we're going to precept Revelation chapter 11 piece by piece to get an understanding because we're in the time that we're in the book of Revelation. Hallelujah. Revelation chapter 11. I was given a reed, taking measuring rod, and was told, Go and measure the temple of Yahuwah and the altar with its worshippers, but exclude the altar court. Do not measure it because it is because it has been given to the Gentiles. They will trample on the holy city for 42 months. Revelation chapter 11. Ah, yeah, Hogan was given a read like a measuring rod and was told. Go and measure the temple of Yahuwah and the altar with its worshippers, but exclude the altar court. Do not measure it because it has been given to the Gentiles, which are the other nations. Hallelujah. They will trample on the holy city for 42 months. It's not literally talking about 42 months because why? According to according to Second Peter chapter three verse eight, it says, "But let not this one thing be hidden from you, beloved, that one day with Yahuwah is a thousand years, and a thousand years." As one day, hallelujah. So, our one day to the most high is thousand years. So, when you say 42 months, it's not too much, little 42 months. Hallelujah. Revelation chapter 11. Ah, uh, Yahugan was given a read, like a measuring rod, and was told, Go and measure the temple of Yahuwah Almighty and the altar with its worshippers but exclude the other court do not measure it because it has been given to the gentiles which are the other nation that is not israel they will trample on the holy city for for the two months all right precept is luke chapter 21 24 they talking about the gentiles the other nation that is not israel they will, they will trample on the city because we the people were not in Jerusalem, we are scattered, we are in exile. So the Jewish people are not us, they are not the children of Israel. According to Luke chapter 21 24, they will fall by the sword and will be taken as, as prisoners to all the nations. Jerusalem will be trampled 
on by the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. Hallelujah. So we the people of Israel, of Jacob, we are not in our land. But the heathens, the other nation, the Gentiles, they are in the land. Revelation chapter 11. I was given a read the commission right and was told, Go and measure the temple of the Almighty and the altar with its worshippers, but exclude the other court. Do not measure it because it is given, because it has been given to the Gentiles. They, the Gentiles, will trample on the holy city for 42 months. All right, it's not too much little for the two months because one day is a thousand years to the most high. Hallelujah. They will trample on the holy city for 42 months. Luke chapter 21, 24. They and the Israelites, the children of Israel, will fall by the sword. And will be taken as prisoners to all the nations. Jerusalem will be trampled on by the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. Hallelujah. Verse 3. Revelation chapter 11 3. I will appoint my two witnesses, and they will prophesy for 1260 days. Clove in sackcloth. They are the two olive trees and the two lampstands, and they stand before Yahuwah, Almighty of the earth. These two olive trees is talking about the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. They get a priest over there. Jeremiah, Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 31, 35. This is what Yahuwah says. Yahoo appointed the sun to shine by day, who decrees the moon and the stars to shine by night, who stirs up the sea so that the waves roll. Yahuwah Almighty is his name. Verses 36. Only if this decrees vanish from my sight, declares Yahuwah, will Israel, yes, we all, ever cease from being a nation before me, declares Yahuwah. So, these two olive tree is talking about the nation of Israel because the nation of Israel is Yahuwah people and we are Yahuwah people forever. Just as you see the heavens, the sun, the stars, which are the angels in the night, the nation of Israel, yes, we all will be our people forever. Revelation chapter 11, verse 3. And I will appoint my two witnesses, and they will prophesy for 1,260 days, clothed in sackcloth. They are the two olive trees. And the two lamp stands, and they stand before Yahuwah, Almighty of the earth. So the two olive trees is talking with the nation of Israel that will prophesy for 1,260 days. But remember, one day, one, one human being day is a thousand years to Yahuwah Most High. Alright, so if you're trying to do the math, to find the right number. Yahuwah says that the two witnesses, which are the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom, the house of Israel, yes, we all, will prophesy for 1,260 days. Remember, one day is a thousand years to the Most High. Hallelujah. Verses 4. 
they are the two olive trees and the two lampstands. They stand before Yahuwah, Almighty of the earth. If anyone tries to harm them, fire comes down. Fire comes from their mouth and devour their enemies. This is how anyone who wants to harm them must die. They have power to shut up the heavens so that it will not rain during the time they are prophesying and they have power to turn the waters into blood and to strike the earth with every kind of disease as often as they want. The funny preacher for that. They go to Jeremiah 23, 28. Yehua says, Yehua Musa says, Let the prophet who has a dream tell their dreams, but let my true messengers fit for the proclaim my every word. There is a difference between scroll and green. 29. Yet what says does not, does not my word burn like fire, says Yehua. It's not like it is. 29. Yet what says does not, does not my word burn like fire, says Yehua. It's not like a hammer. That smashes a rock to pieces. The precept to Revelation 11, verse 4. They are the two olive trees and the two lampstands. They stand before Yahuwah, Almighty of the earth. If any man try to harm them, fire come comes from their mouth and devour their enemies. This is how anyone who wants to harm them must die. They have power to shut up the heavens so that it will not rain during the time they are prophesying. They have power to turn the waters into blood and to strike the earth with every kind of disease, with every kind of plagues as often as they want. Yet what said fire will come from our mouth because yet what words is fire. Jeremiah chapter 23 verses 29. Yet what says it's not my word like fire because yet what and like a hammer that break the rock in pieces. So the prophets they speak yet what words and it's fire. So anyone that try to harm us, we can speak your own words against them and there will be fire to them. Hallelujah. So if the two witnesses, they are prophesying and anybody want to harm them, anybody is planning evil for them, we have your own words which are fire, we can speak against them. Hallelujah. Revelation chapter 11 verses 4. They are the two witnesses. Revelation chapter 11 verse 4. They are the two olive trees and the two lampstands. They stand before Yahuwah, Almighty of the earth. If anyone try to harm them, fire comes from their mouth and devour their enemies. Which is the word of Yahuwah according to Jeremiah chapter 23, verses 29. There are these two witnesses, the northern tribe and the southern tribe. They are the two witnesses, and if anybody trying to harm them, they can speak Yahuwah words, which is fire. Jeremiah chapter 23, 29. 
It's not my world like fire takes your ore and like a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces. Revelation chapter 11, 4. They are the two olive trees and the two lampstands. They stand before Yahuwah, Almighty of the earth. If anyone try to harm them, fire comes from their mouths and devour their enemies. This is how anyone who wants to harm them must die. They have power to shut up the heavens so that it will not rain during the time they are prophesying. They have power to turn the waters into blood and to strike the earth with every kind of plague as often as they want. Now I go to Psalm. Psalm 105 verse 15. Do not touch my naughty ones. Do my prophets no harm. So the prophets they are protected. They can speak anything they want and they are protected. Alright. I can speak against America and they can do nothing to me because I'm protected. I'm in the strength, in the protection, the protection of your Lord Almighty. Alright. I can prophesy against Babylon and America. They are discretion and they can do nothing to me. And when they touch me, I can speak with your words against them. I can curse them. Alright, because Yahweh says in Psalm 105, verse 15, Yahweh says, Do not touch my anointed ones. Do my prophets no harm. Because why the prophet he has power to proclaim Yahweh words. And if anybody want to harm the prophet, the prophet can speak and the prophet can put curse on the person. Because we see that with we see that with all. Elijah Ali Yahoo yeah. Ali Ali Yahoo told like oh uh, Jezebel that she was gonna get eaten by the dog and she got eaten by the dog so the prophet has power. Alright. Revelation chapter eleven that go to four again. All the stuff all over. I was giving a re like a measuring rod and was told. Go and measure the temple of Yahuwah Almighty and the altar with its worshippers, but exclude the altar court. Do not measure it because it is because it has been given to the Gentiles. They will trample on the holy city for forty two months. Yahuwah says, and I will point my two witnesses which are the northern tribe and the southern tribe. And I will point my two witnesses. They will prophesy for 1,260 days, clothed in sackcloth. They are the two olive trees and the two lampstands. And they stand before Yahuwah, Almighty of the earth. If anyone try to harm them, fire comes from their mouth and devour their enemies. This is how anyone who wants to harm them must die. They have power to shut up the heavens so that it will not rain during the time they are prophesying and they have power to turn the waters into blood and to strike the earth with every kind of plague as often as they want. Psalm 105 verse 15. Yahweh says, Do not touch my naughty ones. Do my prophets no harm. Go to Jeremiah 23 29. Yahweh says, It's not my word like fire, declares Yahweh, and like a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces. So, the prophets, they can speak your old words, which, which is fire. The prophets, you cannot do no harm to them. Because if you do harm to the prophet, you'll be doing harm to the to your Almighty. Hallelujah. And I go to the book of Jeremiah. 
Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 4 Then the word of Yahuwah came to me, came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee, and before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sent for thee in I, I sent for thee in ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Then said I, Yahuwah, Alua. Behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. But Yehua said unto me, Say not, I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that I sh I, that shall go to all that I Yehua send thee. And whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee. To deliver thee, says Yahuwah. Then Yahuwah put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And Yahuwah said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. See, I Yahuwah have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out, to pull down, and to destroy, and to, and to throw down, and to build into plant so as the prophet all these powers is given to you to prophesy against nations that downfall that other nation will be raised up to prophesy in the, against the nation the people that discretion hallelujah i'm gonna go to the book of second kings chapter 2 Verse 19. And the men of the city said unto Elishua, Behold, I pray thee, the situation of the city is pleasant, as my master sees, but the water is nothing, and the ground barren. And he said, Bring me a new cruise, and put sod therein. And they brought it to him. And he went forth unto the spring of the waters, and cast the sword in there, and said, Thus is Yahuwah, I have healed thee, I have healed these waters, there shall not be from hence any more death or burial land. So the waters were healed unto this day, according to the saying of Elishua, which he spoke, which he spake. Verse 23, the link to Revelation chapter 11, verse 4, it says, These are the two olive trees and the two lampstands, and they stand before Yahuwah, Almighty of the earth. If anyone tries to harm them, fire comes down, fire comes from their mouth, which is the word of Yahuwah, and devour the enemies. This is this is how anyone who wants to harm them must die. So the two witnesses are the two are the northern tribe and the southern tribe. They will prophesy. If anyone try to harm them, they will speak your words, which is fire. Alright. And nobody can touch the prophet. Nobody can mug them, nobody can scuffle them, nobody can harm them, because you always said, do my prophet no harm, touch not my naughty ones. The prophet has the power to establish a nation, to bring down a nation, to prophesy to the people their discretion. For the six, they have power to shut up the heavens so that it will not rain during the time. They are prophesying and they have power to turn the waters into blood and to scrack the earth with every kind of plague as often as they want. Now, they read the story of Elishua. 
second king chapter 2 verse 23 and he went up from hence unto beth all and as he alishua was set was going up by the way there came forth little children out of the city and mocked him and said unto him go up thou bald head go up thou bald head and he turned back and looked on them and cursed them in the name of Yahuwah. And there came forth two sheep bears out of the wood, and torn forth, and tear forth, and tear forty, forty and two children of them. And he went from hence to Mount Carmel, and from hence he returned to Samaria. So the prophet is ordained by Yahuwah Almighty for him to speak Yahuwah words. And nobody can touch him, nobody can mock him, nobody can scoff at him. If anybody scoff at the prophet, if anybody mock the prophet, the prophet has the power to speak Yahuwah words, to condemn the person, to curse the person, or to bless the person. Hallelujah. But we see like Alishua, the children was mocking him. All right, the children call him Bohe. They say Bohe, Bohe, Bohe. But he turned and cursed the children. And two bears came and ate the children. Two bears came from the wood and killed for the two children just because they mocked the prophet. So when Ye when Yehua says at Psalm, Psalm chapter 105, verse 15, Yehua says, do not touch my naughty ones. Do my prophets no harm. People who pay attention to that. Alright. You cannot mock the prophets. You cannot you cannot discover him. Because we see when the children call the prophet and ball hair, ball hair. What did he do? He cursed them. So the prophet has the power to curse and to bless. Alright. The most I give the prophets power to curse people and to bless people to bring a nation down and to establish a nation hallelujah revelation chapter 11 verse 4 they are the two olive trees and the two lampstands and they stand before you who are almighty of the earth for the five if anyone tries to harm them, fire comes from their mouth, which is the word of Yahuwah, and devour the enemies. This is how anyone who wants to harm them must die. They have power to shut up the heavens so that it will not rain during the time they are prophesying. They have power to turn the waters into blood and to scrag the earth with every kind of plague as often as they want. Now that for another reference or a precept. Let's go to Malachi chapter 4. Malachi chapter 4. For behold the days come up that shall bring as an oven and all the proud year and all that do wickedly shall be stubble and they that come up shall bring them up says the war host that it shall leave them neither root nor branch but unto you that fear my name shall the son of righteousness arise with healing in his wings and ye shall go forth and grow up as calves of the store, and ye shall tread on the wicked, for there shall be arches on the soles of your feet in the day that I shall do this, says Yahuwah. So, according to Revelation chapter 11, verse 4, that the two witnesses that will prophesy, which are the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom, they will prophesy, and if anybody mock them, if anybody discover them, if anybody want to harm them, they will speak your words against that person. And 
that person will be burned up. All right. Which is this precept. Malika chapter 4. Verses 2. But unto you that fear my name, shall the son of righteousness arise with healness in his, in his wings, and ye shall go forth and go up as a calf of the stall. And ye shall tread on the wicked, for there shall be ashes on the soles of your feet. In the day that I, Yahweh, should shall do this, says Yahweh of hosts. So the two witnesses are the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom we prophesy Yahweh words. And if anybody want to harm us, whether it be the government, it be the police, it be the CIA, it be the spying agents, it be the marine, it be the martial law. If anybody trying to harm us, the prophets, we speak your word was against them and it will be burned with fire. And at the end, we will burn them with fire just as Elijah, Ali Yahoo, he burned the prophets of Baal with fire. So the prophets, the two witnesses, also have those powers. Hallelujah. Revelation 11, verse 7. Now when they have finished that testimony, the beast, which is the kingdom that comes up from the abyss, will attack them and overpower and kill them. All right. So the word is given to Jacob. And the, the prophets of all, they preach. They did a job and they are gone. The disciples came and they preached. And what happened? They were killed. They were beheaded. Some of them were beheaded. Some of them were burned on a stake. Some of them was hung on a stake. Some of them were burned. Some of them got beheaded. By who? By the Romans. By the people, see, by the Roman Empire, which is the beast that came from the abyss. The first beast came from the abyss, and the second beast came from, from the earth. The first beast is the Roman Empire, and the second beast will be the revived Roman Empire. Hallelujah. Revelation chapter 11, verse 7. And when they, the two witnesses, hold the, hold the northern tribe and the southern tribe, have finished that testimony. The beast, which is the people see or the Roman Empire that comes from the abyss will attack them and overpower and kill them. The bodies will lie in the public square of the great city, which is talking about America, which is figuratively, figuratively called Sodom in Egypt, where also. Yahushua, the master, was crucified. Another precept is Romans chapter 11, verse 25. For we will not brethren that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness important is happening to Israel yes we are into the fullness of the Gentiles become in right Revelation chapter 11 7 and when they have finished their testimony the beast which is the people see the Roman Empire that comes from the abyss will attack them and overpower and kill them the bodies will lie in the public squares of the great city which is figuratively called Sodom in Egypt, which is talking about America, because why? America is the land of our captivity, because our ancestors came here on ship. All right. So it will be Egypt for us, and America will be Sodom, because why? America will legalize homosexuality, man on man, woman on woman. All right. So America, America is there great city that we call Sodom in Egypt because of the homosexuality and because America 
is the land of our captivity. All right. And we know Yahushua El Messiah had white hair like wool, the sheep hair, red eyes, and skin, skin color like brass. That's burnt in the fire. They get a proof. Revelation chapter 1. One for this fourteen. His hair and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow. His eyes were like a flame of fire, and his feet onto fine brass as if they burnt in your furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. Hallelujah. So we know how Yahushua our Messiah look, how our Savior look, but they change the image around. All right. The scripture says Yahushua is our Messiah. Yahushua looked like his people when Yah came on his earth here. But as soon as our Savior left, the Greeks, the Romans, the Edomites, the Europeans, they switch it around. They give us white Jesus. All right. So Revelation chapter 11 says, Now when they have finished their testimony, the beast which took about the kingdom, because then, then it all says that beast represent kingdom. Alright. When they have finished their testimony, the beast that comes from their babes will attack them. We talk about the this, this Spanish Inquisition, the start of Christianity. Alright. John was beheaded. The disciples were killed. Alright. And the children, the children of Israel were scattered in the captivity. So that's what he's talking about. When they have finished their testimony, the beast, which talking about the people see, that had come from their babes, will attack them and overpower and kill them. Their bodies will lie in the public squares of the great city, which is figuratively called Sodom. In Egypt, we're talking about America, where also Yahushua, the master, was crucified. Okay, Yahushua, our Messiah, was not crucified in America, but it's, speak, it's speaking in parables. Because what we know, how Yahushua looked like, according to Revelation chapter 1, verses 12 to 16, it says, John said, Then I turned to see the voice that spoke speak with me, and being turned, I saw seven gold, golden candlesticks, and in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like the one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a golden garment, clothed with a garment to his feet, and girt about a path with a golden girdle. Verse 14. His hair and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow. His eyes were like a flame of fire, and his feet onto fine brass as if they burned in the furnace. So it tells how Yahushua our Messiah look, that the Messiah had hair like sheep hair, like afro hair, and was white. His eyes were red. And his skin color is like when you take iron, you put it in the fire, you burn it. Because the children, the children of Israel, we are dark skinned people. But the Caucasian, they took the scriptures and they changed it around. Alright. They took the image of our Messiah and they changed it around to the white image. Alright. So when it says over here, that their bodies will lie in the public square of the great city, which is figuratively called Sodom in Egypt, where also Yahushua the master was crucified. So our Savior was crucified, not in America, but it's in America that they give us the white Jesus, they give us the American Jesus, but we know our Savior is not a white man. 
he was not an Englishman, but he was a Hebrew man. He was a Hebrew Messiah. But in a miracle, they give us a white Jesus. All right. And the precept for that is from the book for First Maccabees 3 48. First Maccabees chapter 3, verse 48. First Maccabee chapter 3 48 and they open the book of the law to inquire into those matters about which the Gentiles consulted the image, consulted the likeness of their God. So according to the book of Revelation chapter 1, 12 to 16, Yahushua our Messiah have hair like sheep hair is white. He had red eyes, and this, the color of his skin is like when you take iron, you put it in the fire, which is black. All right, but the heathens, the, the Gentiles, they went into the scriptures, they know how our Messiah look, but they want to blind us, all right, because there's no, salvation is only for the nation of Israel, but the other nations, soon they know that they want to blind us, it's like. When you are choose, when you are chosen, seeing we seeing we the nation of Israel is chosen by the Most High Yahweh, so the other nation they are not chosen, so they want to blind us, they want to keep us in ignorant, in sin, so they give us an image that is not how our, our Messiah look. They give us a name that is not the name of our Messiah. So that's what that's what all. First Maccabee chapter three. For the essays, it says, and they open the book of the law to inquire into those matters about which the Gentiles consulted the, the likeness of their gods. All right. So, Jesus Christ will be that God because why? He looked at them. He looked at them. All right. I'm a so-called black man. If I, I am a so-called black man from the from the from the nation of Israel, and according to the scriptures, only the nation of Israel can be saved. But the other nations, they know that they know they cannot be saved. So, what they want to do? They want to blind Israel. As Paul says, Paul says, Sahu says, but uh. This was this is what Paul says. And, uh, Romans chapter eleven, verse twenty-four. Paul says, or Saul says, for I will not brethren that you should be ignorant of this mystery, lest you should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part is happening to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in so the nation of Israel some of them will be blind until this nation is ruining right now is over with hallelujah so there's a blindness over Yehua people but he let gonna wake up and the other people gonna still be sleeping right it's like right now we woke up to proclaim the good news for the other people here and to believe because of faith come a hearing, hearing the word of Yahuwah. Alright, so Paul says, For we will not the brethren that you should be ignorant of this mystery. So it's the mystery that some people in Israel they are still blinded until the fullness of the Gentiles come in. Because what right now Israel is not ruling, but it's the other nation that ruling. Alright. 
Esau and Jacob, the two brothers, the two twin brothers. Right now, Esau is ruling and Jacob is in captivity, in slavery or in exile. So, some also going to be blinded until the fullness of the Gentiles come in. All right. So, we that are up right now, we are chosen to bring the good news to the other people that are still asleep. So, Paul, Paul doesn't want you to be ignorant of this mystery that yeah, what people are going to be blinded by the deception, by religions, until the fullness of the Gentiles come in. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 11, 25. For will not, brethren, that you should, be, you should be ignorant of this mystery, lest you should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part is happening to Israel. Yes, we all, unto the fullness of the Gentiles come in. All right. Now let's go to the book of Enoch. In that one of four verses nine, do not be do not be wicked in your hearts, or lie, or utter the words of the just verdict, or utter falsehood against the words of the great, the holy one, the quadash one, or give praise to your idols, for all your lies and all your wickedness are not for righteousness, but for a great sin. Right, so Enoch was our ancestor. Enoch was the uh, the forefather of Noah. All right, Enoch and Elijah or Aliyah were taken up because of belief. Enoch wrote a lot of books, and the nation, the other people, they took it and they hated it. All right, a lot of people don't know about the book of Enoch, but Enoch was our ancestor. Enoch was the grandfather of Noah. Enoch was present during the time of the fallen angels. All right. But the other nation that took the book that Enoch wrote and it twisted so Israel can be deceived. Just like Paul says, Saul says that he does not want you to be ignorant that our people are blinded until the fullness of the Gentiles come in. So some of us are, some of us are up. And some of our brothers and sisters, they are still in the mystery of lawlessness. They are still in, they are still in blindness. But the ones that are predestined will be, they will be awakened. All right. In that wonderful verses ten, and I say, and I know this mystery, for they the sinners shall utter the just verdict, and many sinners will take it to heart. They will speak evil words and lies. They will invent factual stories and write out my scriptures on the basis of their own words. And who that they have written down all my words truthfully on the basis of their own speech, neither utter nor take away from my words, or of what, or of which I in like testify to them from the beginning. All right, so in a new that the other nation would take his scriptures and make false religions and make all false religion for Israel, the nation to fall into the false false religion. All right, which link back to link back to Romans chapter eleven verse twenty five. For we will not be that you should be ignorant. Of this mystery, lest you should be wise in your own conceit, that blindness in part is happening to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles come in. All right, so some of our people be blind until the very end. Hallelujah. So we are up, we speak, so the people that are asleep they will get up, and it's, it's hard time for you to get up. Let me go for that scriptures.
and that's Romans chapter 11. Romans chapter 13, 11. This is Let me get a quick translation. Romans chapter 13, 11. And unknowing the time that now is hard time to awake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. Hallelujah. So there's a mystery over, there's a blindness over Israel, but it's time to wake up because why? Our salvation is very close. We are seeing the other nation falling. We are seeing signs of the town. And people are still asleep. People really don't believe that the end is coming. But the end is coming. All right. Romans chapter 13, 11. And that knowing the time that now is hard time to awake out of sleep, which is spiritual sleep. All right. It's like physical and when somebody is sleeping, you try to wake them up. They don't want to wake up because why they are enjoying that sleep. All right. But if you take cold water and waste it on the person, then the person is going to get up. So I hope the truth is cold water in your ears. That it's hard enough for you to wake up that Yahushua is our Messiah. How you can be saved is when you know Yahushua, you know that Yahushua as your Messiah. That our Messiah is black, is dark skin and woody hair. All right. That we are the children of Israel. Yes, we are. We're not black. We're not all. We're not niggers. We're not African American. We're not Africans. But we are the children of Israel. And Yahushua is our Messiah. Our Messiah came from our tribe, from the tribe of Judah, Yehuda. Revelation chapter 11, 7. And when they have finished that testimony, the beasts that come from the babes will attack them and overpower and kill them. Their bodies will lie in the public square of the great city, which is figuratively, figuratively called Sodom in Egypt, where also Yahushua, their master, was crucified. So it's in America that they give for the white Jesus because our master is not a white man. Right, but they do that to blind us. So Paul, Saul, he doesn't want you to be ignorant that our people are blinded. Right, spiritual blindness. Verse nine. For three and a half days, some from every people, tribe, language, and nation will gaze on their dead bodies and refuse them burial. The inhabitants of the earth will gloat of them and will celebrate by sending, sending each other gift because these two prophets have tormented those who live on the earth. Alright, so the other nation, they are not giving the truth. So when we speak the truth, that bother them. So the whole thing that were, were there were dry bones. We didn't know who were. We didn't know who Yahushua was. The other nation were happy. But the nation of, of Israel, when they are up, that's a bad thing for the other nations. Because when we wake up, that is the downfall. Hallelujah. Revelation 11. Verses 9, for three and a half days, which our one day is a thousand years to Yahuwah. So, when you say three and a half days, that's what? That's 3,500 years. Alright, because one day is a thousand years to Yahuwah. So, Yahuwah says, for three and a half days, we're talking about 3,500 years. Some from every people, tribe, language, and nation will engage on their bodies. So for 3,500 3, years, were there, were dry bones, were spiritually there, were dry bones. All right. For three 
and they have this 3,500 years, some from every people, tribe, language, and nation were gazed on at their bodies and refused them burial. So the other nation, they knew who, who we were, but they refused to tell who we were. All right, the enemy is not want to tell you who you are. They're not going to tell you who your creator is because they are not giving the truth. All right. For three and a half days, some from every people, tribe, language, and nation will gaze on that their bodies and refuse them burial. The inhabitants of the earth will gloat over them and will celebrate by sending each other gift because these two prophets had tormented them, had tormented those who live on the earth. All right, the truth is like fire to the wicked people. So when the nation of Israel were this girl, we didn't know who were, we didn't know who Yahuwah, Yahushua, our Almighty was, the other nation, they were happy. But now we are, we are up, we are raising from the state of being dry bones, to having life, that's a bad thing for the other nation because when we arise, Babylon falls. When the children of Israel, yes, we will remember who they are. That's Esau discretion. Hallelujah. 11. But after three and a half days, the breath of life from Yahweh entered them, and they stood on their feet. And terror struck those who saw them. And they get it, they get a preserve for that. Baruch chapter 2, verse 30. Yahuwah says, For I know that they will not obey me, for they are a step in the people. But in the land of the exile, they will come to themselves and know that I am Yahuwah, Yahu, Hayah. For I know that, for I know that they will not obey me, for they are stepping the people. But in the land of the exile, they will come to themselves and know that I am Yahuwah, the Alua, the Almighty. I will give them a, a heart that obeys and ears that hear. They will praise me in the land of the exile and will remember my name. And turn from the stubbornness and the wicked deeds, for they will rem remember the ways of their ancestors who sinned before Yahuwah. John chapter 8, John chapter 6, okay, John chapter 8. For this, to the two, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. So it's the truth that make us free. It's the rock of truth that set us free, which is the rock of life of Ha. Then I go to John chapter six. For this, sixty-three. It is the rock that gives life. The flesh is useless. The words that I, Yahushua, have spoken to you are a rock and life. Hallelujah. Revelation chapter 11 for this. 11. But after three and a half days, we talk about three hundred and five. 3,500 years because one day is a thousand years to year. Well, so one day is a thousand years, another day is another thousand years, another day is another, another thousand years. So that's 3,000 years plus the half day, that's 3,500 years. But after three and a half days, we're talking about 3,500 years, the breath of life from Yahua into them and they stood on their feet and terror struck those. Who saw them? 
So the whole thing were there, were dry bones. But after 3,500 years, the rock of Yahuwah entered into us. And when our enemies saw that, they were scared. The sad thing is, are these the prophets of all? He said, Ali, Ali Yahu, he said, Yahugana, he said, Mata Yahu, he said, Sahu, he said, the prophets of all. Because all the people, they die, but then we're going to be doing the same thing that the prophets of all did. Right? So when our enemies saw us, that we had a rug from Yahushua to shock them. Because when we wake up, that will be that downfall. When Israel, the nation, wake up, that will be the downfall of Esau, Edom. Hallelujah. Then I'll go to Yahugana chapter 6, verse 63. Yahushua says, It is the rock that gave life. The flesh is useless. The words that I, Yahushua, spoke, the words that I, Yahushua, have spoken to you, a rock and life. And to hear these words that Yahushua speak, you will have to listen to you have to listen where your your spiritual ears that Yahuwah has given you because Yahuwah promised in the book of Baruch that Yahuwah Almighty will give us new ears and new hearts that will hear Yahushua voice and what Yahushua speak is life from the naked body, the, the testimony of truth. Yahushua says, Now I, Yahushua, shall speak to those who understand how to listen with spiritual ears and not with their physical ones. For many have sought for the truth but have not been able to find it because the old leaven of the because of the old leaven of the Pharisees and the scribe of the law has overcome them. Hallelujah. So for us the year Yahushua voice, we must ask Yahweh to give us new ears, spiritual ears to hear spiritual things. Revelation chapter 11, verse 11. But after three and a half days, 3,500 years, the breath of Yahuwah, the breath of life from Yahuwah entered them, and they stood on their feet, and terror struck those who saw them. They go to the book of Yakazio, the book of Ezekiel, Yakazio, chapter 37. And the hand of Yahuwah was on me, and Yah brought me by the rock of Yahuwah, and set me in the middle of the valley. It was full of bones. Yah led me back and forth among them, and I saw a great, and I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley, bones that were very dry. And Yah asked me, Ben Adam. Can this boon live? I said, Sovereign Yahuwah, you alone know. Then Yah said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, Dry bones, ye the, ye the word of Yahuwah. This is what Sovereign Yahuwah says to these bones, I will make breath into you and you will come to life. I will turn. I will attach tenders to you and make flesh come upon you and over you with and cover you with, with skin. I will put my breath in you, which is the rock, and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am Yahuwah. So I, Yakazi, all prophesy as I was commanded, and as I was prophesying. There was a noise, a rattling sound, and the bones came together, bone to bone. A log and tenders on flesh appeared on them and skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then Yah said to me, 
prophesied to the birth, prophesied son of man, said to it, and this is what sovereign Yahweh says, come birth from the four winds and breathe into this land that they may live. So I prophesy as Yah committed me and breathe into and breath into them. They came to life and stood on their feet. If a vast army, then Yah said to me, Son of man, these bones are the people of Yasuri all. They say, Our bones are dry up. Our hope is gone. We are cut off. Devil prophesy and say to them, This is what Sovereign Yahweh says. My people, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from them. I will bring back, I will bring you back to the land of Yasuri all. Then you will know, then you, my people, will know that I am Yahuwah when I open your graves and bring you up from them. Hallelujah. Revelation chapter 11, verses 11. But after three and a half days, 3,500 years, the breath of life from Yahuwah entered them, and they stood on their feet and terrified those who saw them. Then they heard a, a loud voice from heaven saying to them, Come up here. And they went to heaven in a cloud while the enemies looked on. Therefore, another precept. Wisdom Solomon chapter 5. Then the righteous will stand with great confidence in the presence of those who have oppressed them and those who are made light of their labors. When the unrighteous see them, they will be shaken with dreadful fear and they will be amazed at the unspeakable salvation of the righteous. They will speak to one another in repentance and in anguish of spirit. They will groan and say, This is our person whom we once held in derision and made a bower of reproach. Fools that we were, we thought that their lives were madness and their end was without honor. Why have they been numbered among the children of Yahuwah? And what is the lot among the saints? So it was us, so it was we who strayed from the way of truth and the light of righteousness did not shine on us, and the sun did not rise upon us. We took our fill of the path of lawlessness and discretion, and we journeyed to, to the trackless desert. But the way of Yahuwah we have not known. Alright, so this will be the thoughts of the wicked of Esau, Edom, every the tutor of our of our people. When we are taken up in the chariots by the messengers, this will be the thoughts of the enemies, the wicked people, Esau, Edom, and every Israel that joined to Esau, Edom. They get another precept from the from the apocalypse of Ali Yahoo. The Apocalypse of Ali Yahu chapter 5. The removal of the righteous. So that's when we are taken up on the wings of the messengers. Apocalypse of Ali Yahu chapter 5 verse 2. The removal of the righteous. On a day, Yahushua Messiah will pity those who are his own. And Yah will send from heaven his 64,000 messengers each of whom has six wings, which are the seraphim. The sound will move heaven and earth when they give praise and glorify. Now those upon whose forehead the name of Yahushua Messiah is written, and upon whose hand 
is the sea of both the small and the great will be taken up upon their wings and lifted up before his wrath. Then Kaba we all and we we all will become a pit of light, leading them into the set apart land. It will be granted to them to eat from the tree of life. They will wear white garments which are nail bodies, and the messengers will watch over them. They will not thirst, nor will the son of lawlessness be able to prevail over them. Hallelujah. Verse 7 And natural disasters which follow the removal of the righteous. And on that day the earth will be disturbed, and the sun will be darkened, and peace will be removed from the earth. The birds will fall on the earth there, the earth will be dry, the waters of the sea will dry up, the sinners will groan upon the earth, saying, What have you done to us, O son of lawlessness? Saying, I am Messiah. Saying, I am the Messiah. You are the devil. So, all that day, people realize that Esau is really the devil, that white Jesus is fake. That white Jesus is is made up. Alright, that says that Jesus Christ is Cesare Bogia. Alright. That Isa is really the devil. That Jesus Christ is the image of the beast. At that day, people are gonna realize that realize that that Jesus Christ is the false Messiah. Alright. The sinners will groan upon the earth, saying. What have you done to us, O son of lawlessness, son of lawlessness? Saying I am Hamashiach, saying I am the Messiah. When you are the devil, you are unable to save yourself so that you, you might save us. You produce signs in our presence until you alienated us from Yahushua Messiah. Yahushua the Messiah who created us. Woe to us because we listen to you. Lo, now we will die in your family, where indeed is one, where, in, where indeed is now the trace of a righteous one, and we will worship him. Or where indeed is the one who will teach us, and we will appeal to him. Now indeed we will be. We are the scroll because we disobey Yahuwah. Hallelujah. So, when the righteous are taken up, then our enemies, even the unbelievers, that's when they're going to realize that the whole time they've been deceived, that the whole time we're telling the truth that Yahushua is our Messiah. All right? And now whatsoever you think, when we are taken up, that's when they're going to recall everything, that everything we've been saying, the whole time we're prophesying, the whole time we were yet yeah, we were chosen people, we were the elect, we were the little ones, we we're prophesying for them to be safe, but the whole time they were rejecting the truth. But when we that preach now, the servants of Yahweh yeah, are taken up right before the eyes, our enemies, our oppressors, those that hear the truth. That's when they're going to see that, that Jesus Christ is Cesare Bogia, an image of the Pope's son. That Yahusha is not the Messiah. That Yahawasha is not the Messiah. Hallelujah. That Yahushua is our Messiah, our Almighty. They're getting the precept. First Thessalonians chapter 4, 17. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet Yahuwah in the air. And so we will be with Yahuwah forever. Hallelujah. So we will get caught up in the clouds to change. 
going for this mortal must put on immortality for this corruptible must put on for this corruption must put on incorruption so we're going to be caught up in the clouds with the sinners with the, with the messengers the unbelievers, our oppressors, will look up and they will see us. At that time, there will be no, there will be no repentance for them. That time, they will land the highway. All right? They, they did not want to acknowledge Yahushua as the Messiah. But at that time, it will be too late. They will land the highway. Hallelujah. Revelation chapter 11. For says, 11 but after three and a half days the breath of life from you will enter them and they stood on their feet and they were shot those who saw them then they heard a loud voice from heaven saying to them come up here and they went up to heaven in a cloud while the enemies looked on so that will be our screen salvation will be taken before our enemies before the unbelievers, they will see us be taken up by the by the messengers. All right. Thirteen. At the very hour, there was a severe earthquake, and the tenth part of the city collapsed. All right. So that will be at the sex seal. All right. That will be at the sex seal. When the one of the fifth thousand see you, which are the servants of Yahuwah, then we we'll get taken up. Remember the discussion coming. There gonna be a big earthquake, but that's not gonna happen until you are seven and see you and the good news is preached. According to Matthew chapter twenty four. Matthew chapter 24 to 9 immediately after the disgrace of those days the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light and the stars will fall from the sky and the heavenly bodies will be shaken then will be the son of Yahushua son of man in the heavens and then all the people on earth will moon when they see Yahushua, son of man, coming on the clouds of heaven with power and a great glory, esteem. And Yah will send his messengers with a loud trumpet call, and they will gather his elect from the four winds from one end of the heaven to the other. Now learn this lesson from the victory. As soon as it fakes, as soon as it twigs, get tender, and it leaves, come out. You know that summer is near. Even so, when you see all these things, you know that it is near. Right at the door. A little so, this world is winter to us. The next age will be summer for us. So Yahushua is new saying the factory to compare the seasons. When summertime is coming, you know because when you see trees bearing fruit, bearing leaves. But when winter is coming, the tree will die. But we are seeing the trees bearing fruit and leaf which are the believers we are trees and we're bearing fruit we're being more fruit in the last days as we get to the age we bear more fruit because in the next age is is summer for us this age is winter so as we get into summer which is the next age that's given to jacob our ancestor we are bearing more fruit hallelujah revelation chapter 
11 verses 13. At that very hour, there was a severe earthquake, and the ten part of the city collapsed. 7,000 people were killed in the earthquake, and the survivors, the survivors were terrified and gave esteem to Yahuwah, Alua, Almighty of the heavens. So that would be the sex seal. Revelation chapter 6, for this 12, I watch as Yah, which is the Lamb, Yahushua is the Lamb, that is worthy to open this, the seven seals. Revelation chapter 6, 12, I watch as Yah opening the sixth seal. There was a great earthquake. The sun turned black like sackcloth made of good hair. The whole moon turned blood red, and the stars in the sky fell to the earth, which are meteors, as fake drops from a fake tree when shaken by a mighty or a strong wind. The heavens recited. The heavens recited like a scroll being rolled up, and every mountain and island was removed from its place. Then the kings of the earth, the princes, the generals, the rich, the mighty, everyone else, both slave and free, hey, in the cave, among the rocks of the mountains, they call to the mountains and the rocks, fall on us, hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb for the great day of his wrath has come and who can withstand it so when the, when the one year of thousand and the believers are taken up that's when we're going to be the big earthquake which will be at a sex seal and we we are able to interpret the book of Revelation because why we're getting into the, we're getting into the end time. The book was sealed. The interpretation was sealed. But now Yahweh Almighty is allowing His people, His chosen men, His servants to interpret the book of Revelation and all the scriptures because we're entering the time that we will get taken up. We're in the time that we're, we're bearing fruit. We're entering the summertime. Revelation chapter 11, 13. At the very hour, there was a severe earthquake. And the ten part of the city collapsed. 7,000 people were killed in the earthquake. And the survivors were terrified and gave glory, esteem to Yahuwah, Alua, Almighty of the heavens. The second war has passed, the third war is coming. Verse 15. The seventh messenger which, which is Michael, according to the book of Daniel, that will blow the trumpet at the day of resurrection, at judgment day. The seventh messenger sounded his trumpet, and there were loud voices in heaven which said, the kingdom of this world has become the kingdom of Yahuwah, our Alua Almighty, and of his Messiah, and Yah will reign forever and ever. And the twenty-four elders who were seated on their thrones before Yahuwah fell on their faces and worshipped Yahuwah, saying, We give thanks to you, Yahuwah, Alua Almighty, the one who is who was because you have taken your great power you have begun to reign the nations were angry and your wrath has come the time has come for judging the dead and for rewarding your servants the prophets and your people who revere your name both great and small for destroying 
those who destroy the earth. Then Yahweh temple in heaven was open, and within his temple was seen the ark of his covenant, and there came flashes of lightning, rumblings, perils of thunder, an earthquake, and a severe a severe hailstorm. Hallelujah. So this is the breakdown of Revelation chapter 10 and 11. May you will open your ears that you will hear these words and we enter your ears. It will be a beneficial to you, to your brother, your sister, your mom, your dad, in Yahushua name. Hallelujah. And I pray this was a barakah to Somali. To Yahuwah people, praise Yah, praise Yahuwah, praise Yahushua, my Almighty, Hallelujah.